Okay. So today we're going to use partial, partial quotients to divide by one-digit divisors. Now, this is going to involve a couple of different steps, but it's very similar to using multiples and repeated subtraction to find your quotient. Okay. So let's say we had a problem like 125 divided by 5. This was our problem. First, we would start by listing some multiplication facts of our divisor on the side so we have some options of multiples to subtract. So I usually like to multiply by 2, 5, 10, and 20 to kind of give me some options. So I'm going to multiply by 2 first, 2 times my divisor, which is 5. 2 times 5 is 10, so that's going to be an option to subtract. Let's do, let's multiply by 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 10 times 5 is 50. And then let's do 20 times 5 is 100. Okay, so that's going to give us some options to subtract 125 by. So let's think. Which one of these numbers on the left comes closest to 125? Oh, well, obviously, 100 comes closest to 125. So let's subtract that first. So we would take 100 away. Now, which multiple are we using? We're using the 20th multiple of 5. So we're going to keep track of that over here, okay? Because those are what we're going to add up at the end to find our quotient. So let's subtract 100. 5 minus 0 is 5. 2 minus 0 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, now we're left with 25. Well, which one of these on the left are closest to 25? Oh, we have one that's exactly 25. So let's subtract that. Okay. Now, don't forget, we mul it's the fifth multiple of 5. So let's put that 5 over here. Okay, so let's subtract 25 minus 25 is zero, of course. Now to get our quotient, we add up the multiples that we used for the problem on the side. Zero plus five is five. Two plus nothing is two. So our quotient is actually 25. It's very similar to that repeated subtraction with multiples we did the other day. The only difference is that we're writing those math facts on the left-hand side to give us options to use. So let's try another one. Let's say we had 330. Actually, I'm going to move this over a little bit farther to give me more space. 330 divided by 3. Okay. Well, I know I'm going to have to find numbers that are close to 330. So on the side, I'm not going to do the multiplication facts of 2, 5, 10, and 20, because that won't really get me anywhere near 330. Well, how about I at least, let's at least start with 10. That's kind of a small one. And you know what? 3 times 10 is 30. I also see 30 in my dividend. So that's a good clue. Hmm, I might need to use this fact later. So let's list it now. Well, what can get me close to 300? Well, 3 times 100 is 300. So I'll probably use that one too. All right, let's try just using these and see if we need to make anything else. So what's the closest one to 330? 300 is, right? So that's what we're going to subtract. Now we're using the hundredth multiple, so we need to record that on the side. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. Okay, so now, hey look, we were right. We're going to use this 30 now to subtract. Which multiple did we use? We used the tenth multiple, so we got to record that on the side each time we use it. So 30 minus 30 is 0, which is what we want. Keep subtracting until you get to 0. And then you add up the multiples you used on the side. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus nothing is 1. 
So your quotient would be 110. Let's try one more before you go. Let's do 428 divided by 4. Okay, well, I see a 400, I see a 20, I see an 8. So I'm going to write those multiplication facts on the side because those are the ones I think I will use to subtract. So let's start with 4 times 2, that would give me 8. How about 4 times 5, that would give me 20. And let's do 4 times 100, which would give me 400. All right, let's use those and try to subtract. So, which one is closest to 428? 400 is. So that's what we'll subtract first. Got to record which multiple use. We use the hundredth multiple, so write that on the side. Okay, 8 minus 0 is 8. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, so now we have 28 left. So the closest one is 20. We'll take away 20. Which multiple did we use? We used the fifth multiple. Carry that over here. Now subtract. 8 minus 0 is 8. 2 minus 2 is 0. Now we're left with 8. I see an 8 over here. We'll use that. We'll subtract this one. It's the second multiple, so we'll put that 2 over here. 8 minus 8 is 0, of course. And then add these up to find your quotient. 0 plus 5 is 5, plus 2 is 7. 0 plus nothing is 0. 1 plus nothing is 1. So your quotient would be 107. Now, some of you might be saying, Ms. Brewer, we could have used 4 times 7 equals 28. You're right, we could have. We would have done that differently by, now you don't have to write this, I'm going to erase and redo it and show you how you could use 4 times 7. So you don't have to erase your work and redo it, I just want to show you. So. If we have written down 4 times 7 is 28, right? And we saw this 28. Oh, let's use this guy so we get right to 0, right? The multiple we used was 7. Record that over here, 0, 0, and then added them up. You would still get 107. We just got there differently before by subtracting 20 and 8. But if you remembered 4 times 7 is 28, you could have used that too. It's all about keeping subtracting until you get to 0. Okay? And you want to write those multiplication facts on the side to kind of help you out and give you options about what to subtract. Okay. So, your practice problems. You are going to do 735 divided by 7. You're going to do 738 divided by 6. And 5, oh, not 5, 475 divided by 5. Okay, you're going to need more space than I left you. Make sure you list those multiplication facts on the side to help you. And keep track of those multiples on the right. Add them up at the end, and that will be your final quotient. Have a good night.